I always heard the phrase as a kid, don't meet your heroes. As a kid, I thought that meant having heroes was bad. Didn't stop me from having them, though. As I grew older, I thought to myself, either you have some terrible heroes, or you just believe whatever negative stories you hear about them and decide, eh, I don't like him much anymore. Which, to some people's credit, is a good thing, because some people do very heinous things that deserve a lot of vitriol thrown their way, but the vast majority of the time, I just don't reckon that's the case. What I also learned as I grew up was that there's a big difference between hero and influence. My hero is Jesus Christ, but my influences are well, Jesus Christ, but also anyone else that comes through my life and aids, inspires, or changes me in one way or another. It's also the very odd societal conflation of the words that I find frustrating. A hero is someone who is admired and respected for noble traits or virtuous efforts, someone who is a prime example of living life to a much higher philosophical degree. That person could be considered a hero. Mick Gordon is not my hero, but he is one of my biggest influences. Now, an influence, as I understand it through my own experience, is someone who has aided me in whatever way the aid came about, in whatever activity the aid was particular to. If that was a lot of words, I completely understand, so let me specify. Mick Gordon is one of my biggest influences in music. He completely changed the way I view music through the mega mixes of Doom and Doom Eternal, the emotional weight of the Wolfenstein Saga's soundtrack, and the raw power and energy from Killer Instinct Seasons 1 and 2 that inspires me to go lift weights. Seriously, if I was only ever able to listen to five songs for the rest of my life, one of them would be Inferno. <laughs> So when I went to NAMM 2024 this year, I set a goal for myself. Talk to as many influences of mine as I possibly could, and ask them all the same question. Do you like handshakes? <laughs> See, there's a theory in my head that after a certain point of fame, you really enjoy the notoriety and people recognizing you, and then there's a point in time where it gets to be overwhelming and you just don't like it, and then the third level is where you just kind of accept it. But apparently I'm wrong because literally nobody answered like that. So this is the video compilation of all the people I met as I asked them the one question on my mind. How do you feel when people ask for a picture? A warning beforehand, Nam is a very, very loud place, and some of these answers were terrible in the audio department because there's way too much going on. So please do watch the video all the way through because I will transcribe all the audio and have in-video captions so that you can understand what the heck everyone is saying. I am sorry that I couldn't get better audio quality, I just don't have very good gear. Subscribe and become a patron or YouTube member if you want me to get better equipment. <laughs> so, do you like it when people walk up to you all the time and shake your
eventually get tired of and don't look forward to it? Or do you look forward to it at all? I mean, I think when I'm really tired and really, you know, like life has been super hard, it can get a little bit much. But in, in my, I mean, at the NAM show, it's a very different kind of atmosphere because a lot of people maybe would know who I am. Yeah. But everyday life, maybe more personal than it is. to do that and no, it's not it's, it's no problem at all and like NAM show it's like you it's cool you expect it's, it's fine in fact you know what I have got here as well is I even carry special plectrum so that when people are nice to me and go can I have my photo with you I can reward them a piece of cheap plastic thank you this is the most valuable cheap plastic I ever had <laughs> alright thank you thank you you're welcome how do you feel when people come up to you like and shake your hand and uh, ask for pictures out in public, even in environments like this, but also like do people approach you in the street? Yeah, um, I love it. I love meeting you guys. And uh, yeah, one time someone, I was having dinner with my girlfriend and we were outside at a patio and there was another patio about 20 feet away and someone at that patio yelled to me and they said, hey, are you that guitar guy? And I just laughed. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So yeah, it's great. No, I, I, I love it. It's awesome. Cool. So it never gets like overbearing at times, or like you never think you get tired of it. I'm not famous enough for that yet. <laughs> Do you think you will be at one point? Give it a couple years. Yeah. <laughs> I'll come back to you in a couple years then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how is it like when people come up to you and like ask to shake your hand or for pictures and stuff like that? When fans come up to me and ask for pictures, it makes me want to figure the cheat street. <laughs> That's how it is. It's the right answer. <laughs> now just leave. <laughs> when people come up to you to like shake your hand, you know, it's all about the ball. Yeah, they're like, 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 they Yes, yeah. 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 
Disney of uh, if you're one of the Disney actors playing like a character or whatever, and some kid comes up to you, never bring a dog first because you don't know what someone's bringing to that interaction. So that's always been my theory on it. Is like, is it tiring sometimes? Is it a lot? Yeah, but like the least you can do is just give someone that because you don't know what they need from that or what they're like bringing to that. You know, having had those moments of like, you know, Brian Trifon, like Trifonic, huge inspiration for me, like to message him on Bandcamp and get yeah, like, hey, thanks for buying my record. And that was like something that like really stuck out to me. It's like, oh, holy shit, you know, or like, yeah. you know, someone liked my music as well. So for me, like, as frustrating as it can get sometimes, just, you know, being tired and grumpy and whatever, it's also a thing of like, if there is that chance that that interaction is like that little, tiny chance of something that like really means something to someone, I think it's worth it. So don't break the up. Uh -huh. 
you sign one for my father, please? Yeah, what's the name? Chris. Chris? C-H-R-I-S. Awesome. Does all this fame ever get overwhelming at one point? No, dude. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Would you trade it for anything else, though? Don't even say I'm just, I'm, I'm, I have two kids now. Two small kids. Yeah. So, the four who were on, it's always dad. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. So yeah, that was my interview segments with the many famous people I met at the NAM show 2024. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and comment who your favorite person in this interview was and who I should interview next time if I am fortunate enough to meet anybody. Also, if any of you are good lip readers or transcribers at all, please let me know what the inaudible sections say because I genuinely don't know. Some of those parts were just completely irrecoverable so if you want please become a patron or youtube member so that i can actually afford getting good gear because hopefully i want to attend uh gdc and QuakeCon this year and it'd be really nice if i could actually go with some good equipment right <laughs> anyways i'll see you guys around later take care